ever tried managing form states in React and felt like you are drowning in a sea of your states? Well, worry no more, React 19 just dropped a superhero hook called Use Action State. And today we are going to learn how it can clean up your code and we are doing it all with TypeScript and a touch of a server side action. So let's dive in. All right, let's start with the problem. So imagine you are building a simple login form in React. You are probably using multiple use states as well to track things like the email, the password, the loading and the error state as well. It gets out of hand very quickly as your form even grows. So here what's happened here. We have four use state hooks just for this simple form. One for email, one for password, one for loading, and one for errors. Not only is it a lot of code, but can also get tricky to manage. So this is gonna be a better way, right? So let's enter use action state react 19 gift to humanity. With this, we can manage all that state in one place. So let's start refactoring the code to use use action state instead. So let's buckle up. First things first is that we need to define a form state type. Okay, so we'll go up here because we're using TypeScript. If you're using JavaScript, then you don't need this step. Okay, so first thing we want to track the load and error in a single object. Then we'll create a sync function, we'll call it login user that will handle the logic for when the form is submitted. So basically we'll move all this logic out from here to here. Okay. So what I will do is this code right here. And all what I have done is that we defined a login user that will take two arguments. The first is the previous form state. This is where the use action state shines by giving us the last known state before submitting your form. The second argument is the form data. This is everything that the user entered into the form. So if you like, you are like me and you tend to forget where you set, for example, password one, two, three as your password or your birthday, this function is going to tell you straight up, Hey buddy, you are wrong because it remembers everything for you. Okay, and you can see it easily in 1314 without using an extra hook. We're just accessing the details of our field from this form data that login user function will get access directly using the hook. Now, let's move on to the next thing and let's actually import the use action state. So I'll come right here, I'll just say use action state. Okay, we import it from React. Then I'll come inside my functional component. And again, remember all the hooks can only be used inside functional components. I'll declare const array, same we do for use state, it's same thing also for use action state. It gives us back an array. Okay, and the first value is the state, your current state, and the second one is your action. Okay, and I'll call it form action. And that will be equal to our hook use action state. Okay, so now we are cooking. Let's break down. So we are calling this use action state at the top of our component, passing it in our login user that we defined right here. Okay, so that will be the first parameter we are passing. And then the second parameter is the initial state. Okay, and my initial state will be the loading which I'll set to false because first time it will be not loading and error will be to an empty string. Okay. And those are types we defined right here. This hook will return an array, as I said, so the current state and a new form action that we can use in our form tag. Okay. So we'll go back to our form tag right here and I will remove um, the on submit built in of uh, property. And what we will do now, we'll use something called action and we'll give it back this form action right here. So that's how you're connecting your form to your use action. So basically when the form is submitted, the form action runs, update the state, which is right there. And we display messages based on whether there was an error. So no more juggling a bunch of use state hooks. So use action state manage it all for us. Even more further, I can just go now ahead and remove these from here. 
remove these as well and here now we don't x directly but through the state and also here state and there state as well and also here it is state.error okay so i'll so just save it so you can see now your component looks also much better much cleaner and no more a lot of states to manage by yourself which can be really messy and create bugs in real big applications now for the big league what if i told you that we can run our login logic on the server that's right by using use action state with react server component we can do the heavy lifting server side and let the client side just chill it's like outsourcing your chores and still getting the credit so let's move the login user logic to the server and watch the magic happen so we'll go right here so i'm using uh, Next.js, by the way, so I'll create here a server folder and then I will call it action.js. So I'll create a file called action.js. You can call this anything you like. And what I will do, I'll just copy this code from here, all of it, and let's move it right there. Okay, and here I'll just say use server and actually this will be ts not js so rename we're using typescript ts good so all what we have done is just we moved our function which was defined here okay to our server side and almost it's still doing the same thing for us okay we just have to change few things we will have to export our async function so i'll come here and say export async function and i'll just change the name so it's meaningful i'll say login user on server okay and then it accepts two parameters so you have the form data okay and i will remove the, this one because we don't need it anymore so it's just accept one parameter at the moment we are not using the previous uh, data at the moment so if you need it of course you keep it if i don't do need it you just remove it so we have our form data and then it gives us back a prompt okay with the form state and the form state i would change it now a little bit so i want to have either success message okay uh, if it's not success measures i want to have success if it's successful or a message type so i'll come here i'll just say success okay we should be a boolean and then you have your message type we should be of type string okay and again if you don't want to change these things you don't have to change them but because i did that change now in here in the return i want to have a success message so if uh, everything is happy then it is successful true and then i will have a message saying that logging successful otherwise there is no success or success is false and the message will be for example invalid email or invalid credentials or whatever messages you like so here's the magic of the server side logic we were taking this login user function from our component itself and we move it to the server and return a success flag and a message now let's refactor our client side component to use this server action okay so i'll save this now i'll go back to my component and still will be using the use action state of course and i will import my logging for user on server okay and instead of passing before that uh, method we had before defined within our component we'll pass on the new one that we have created now you can see i have a lot of wiggling lines and that's because my components uh, have issues with the types here so we have to fix this so first thing is that let's create here a type okay which is your form state type okay it describes the structure of your form state so what you'll go we're going to use action state right here okay and we'll add the first generic parameter Okay, which will be the form state. 
I will come back to it. Okay. So basically, again, this one describes the structure of the foam state. This includes the loading, okay, and the error and the success state as well. And what I will do, this one I will not add, keep it null as well, make it sure it's always Boolean. Now, we need to add a second generic parameter that will describe the data type the form action receives when the form is submitted. Okay, and that will be the form data. Now you can see all the wiggly lanes we had before here, they are gone, but still we have one more. Okay, now this issue really arises only because of the type mismatch between the logger user on server function and the expected signature for the use action state here. And here is why. The function passed to use action state, which is right there, okay, expect to receive two arguments. The current state is your form state and the form payload, which is your form data. However, your login user on server function expects only the form data and doesn't know what to do with the form state. So to fix this, we need to modify a little bit the login user function to work with both current state and the form data. So that to ensure that the hook works properly and TypeScript is very happy. So to do that, we don't need to do anything here. Most of the work will be done right there. And what I will do, I will just paste quickly some code and then we will go throw it together. Okay, so what we have done is that we still have our default state here. But in here before, we just called the name of our function. But what I have done is just I explicitly extend this and I have access both to previous state and our form data. Then I set the loading to true before starting my server okay right here and then perform the login action on the server right here return in details the new form uh, state based on the server response okay so this just to make my typescript really happy and make sure that we are not having any holes for our bugs to happen but again this is did not have to you can just ignore that error and keep going but usually it's not very recommended and if you're using javascript you don't have to do this extra work at all so again to recap this last change we updated this use action state hook to handle both the current form state and the form data payload and inside the async function we simulate setting loading to true while waiting for the server to respond. Then the form action is now an asynchronous function that first update the state with the loading true, then sends the form data to the server. And based on the response from the server, it updates the state accordingly. So loading is set to false, again in the line 22, and error is either empty or the error message returned from the server and the success is set to true or false depending or based on the server response now the form state type now includes success as a boolean to track the success of the login and we use this async wait await inside the use action state to handle asynchronous server call correctly so the key points of this is that this pattern ensures that the state is updated progressively loading when the request is in a progress and either error or success based on the response and you avoid any typescript issues because now the login user on server function operates only on the form data while the hook is managing the form state internally and that is the magic of use action state we went from managing many or thousands of states in the client to cleanly organizing them with one hook to offloading all the hard work to the server this is the future of form handling in react and if you are as excited as i am smash that like a button hit subscribe and get ready for more code magic so see you in the next one